Hi, in this lecture, I'd like to show you some of the other capabilities of Sony IDE in particular that are relating to debugging that a lot of people are asking about. Now, I've got to say that these features are not really available for MicroPython programming uh, on the ESP32, but they are available for general purpose Python, uh, full desktop version of Python. And I'm going to use that uh, for examples that are coming up. Again, these are not features that we are going to be using later on in this course, but things that people do ask about. And I just wanted to make sure that you've got a good understanding of the Thorny IDE editor before we get on with MicroPython. So I have already opened up the variables heap and stack windows. You can do that by going to view and choose the window that you want to open up. As others, for example, the program tree that you can see down here and now uh, let's have a look at the uh, object inspector and so on. I'm not going to go through all of them uh, because uh, then we are going outside of the scope of this course, which is to focus on MicroPython. Now, before uh, I start with my small demonstration, I also wanted to point out that if you go to the thony.org website, it's a very homepage, there's a demo video here, which I have mentioned previously, you should really take a look at. It will give you a really good uh, overview of those features that I'm also going to touch upon in this lecture. Okay, so I'm going to turn off the object inspector and the program tree, we don't really need it. And I'm going to switch my targeted interpreter to the default one, because as I said, these features don't work with the ESP32 MicroPython version. So now we are running Python 3.7.9. Got a little program here that just adds two numbers. I've got number one and number two, just a couple of arbitrary random numbers. You can also use the input function to allow you to enter those numbers during the runtime, but let's keep things simple. Then I've got a calculation happening here, the result goes into the sum variable and I print out the results onto the shell like this. And I'm using the format function. I'm going to talk more about this in section five, which is a fairly detailed introduction to Python. So don't worry about the details about what this does. What is important right now is what the output is. So you run this program, and you see that the output is just the sum of the calculation with a bit of information about what was calculated and the components of the calculation. Now, see what happened as soon as I executed the program is that the variables tab became populated with the numbers. You can see here that I've got the value ID, which this is a memory location where number one is stored and number two and sum. I also have the heap memory and the stack is empty. Now, the heap memory is where both heap and stack are stored in RAM. Python in particular uses heap and stack differently. So as I said, both are part of the RAM, but in heap memory, Python is going to store the global variable. As you can see here, number one is a global variable and it's stored at this memory location, CB0, and that matches this ID here in the heap, which has this value 1.5 as it was assigned here number th line number three in the script. And similarly, number four line declares and initializes variable number two, which you can see here, this is its value ID in RAM, which is right here in the heap. Again, heap is where Python stores its global variables. You've got some which was created later and its content are the result of the addition between number one and number two. We don't have it, anything in the stack because we don't have any functions. So let me show you an alternative of this little simple program. So here I've got the exact same thing happening, but now I've got a function declared called add numbers. And again, don't worry about the details. I'm going to talk about how to create functions in section five of this course. But you'll see that we've got the global variables. We've got the sum variable created here, and then we've got a call to the function add numbers. So essentially the program jumps from here 
to here and then we'll go into line number five and um, execute it. Now if I run this program, see what happens. So after the execution of the program, one thing that we didn't really see was uh, what happened in the stack, if at all. So the stack, as I said earlier, is where Python keeps track of its position in the program tree. So especially useful when uh, we have to go from one part of the program and continue with the execution of the program inside a function. So for Python to know where to return once the execution of the function is complete, it needs to keep track of the origin of the call inside the stack. And uh, to be able to see the stack getting populated, I'm going to use the debug function. First, I'm going to have a little uh, line stop here. Just double click on the line where I want the execution to stop temporarily. And then I'm going to click on the debug current script button. And that will start executing the program, but it will stop at the location where I've got the red dot, the stop line. And you can see that I've got my variables here, the global variables. I've got my heap exactly as we did earlier. Now we've got an additional component in the heap. We've got the function add numbers. There you go. So the program does know about it. And I can continue the execution of the program by using one of those buttons here. So step over, step into, and step out. Step over allows me to move on to the next line of the program without actually drilling in into the individual components that make up this line of code. Instead of going stepping over, I'm going to go step into to explain more about what I'm talking about here. So just remember that we are now executing line 15 and I'm going to step into, and you can see that now with step into, the execution continues into the right side of the equal sign. And if I click on step into again, it drills further into the first component of this addition. And it will evaluate that. You can see that it will change it into its ID. So variable number one now has been replaced in the code itself with its value ID, which you can see in the variables tab and also in the heap tabs, you can see its actual assigned value do one more step into and then it goes over to the other side and have some look at the number and again you can guess if i click on it again it's going to drill into the number and replace it with its id but instead i'm going to go and do a step over and that is going to skip it and start exiting and until eventually the whole thing the sum of these two numbers is replaced by the id where those numbers are stored which is B30 7.8 and let's do a step out again and now it's going to jump into line 19. Now look what happens here as soon as I went into line 19 where is the call to the add numbers function the stack keeps track of that. The stack now keeps track of where I'm going to jump into another part of the program which happens to be a function so that this is where I'm going to return, or the program is going to return to once the function execution is complete. Let's go ahead and do a step over there, and we finished. So it's not going to drill into the function because I did a step over. I'm going to do one little thing here, and I'm going to say print finished, like that. And I'm going to execute again under uh, using the debugger. But this time I'm going to go for step over for the first time and then I'm going to do step into. Before I do that I'm going to open up the stack window. You can see that the module at line 19 is in the first position of the stack. I'm going to do a step into now. Uh, okay, drilling into the function and now this is interesting. You see that a new window popped up because now we have drilled into the add numbers function. So a new window popped up to show us what is happening inside that function. And you can see that another entry has been made into the stack. This is now line five, which is the line that we are executing right now. So let's do step into again. You can see it's drilling into the individual components and replacing them with the IDs in the heap that contain 
the values for those variables. So those are added here as they are being executed and evaluated and so on. So the whole print statement and its parameter is replaced by a single location, or single ID, I should say, right here. 8F0, 8F0, like this, which is where the string of the resolved message is stored. So one more. Okay, finished. So that's done. So you can see that we are now coming back from the stack into the main part of the program. So the stack entries now only contains line 19 because we are done, or the Python is really done with the execution and evaluation of the function. So let's do one more. Actually, I'm going to go for a step over now and print out finished. And we're done. So in this demonstration, just wanted to show you what kind of work you can do with the additional views and features that are available here under the view menu. Again, we're not going to be able to use these features in our micro Python programming on the HP32, but they are available if you are interested in general purpose uh, desktop or C Python programming. The debugger that we saw in action here is actually a Python project called Bird's Eye. So you can find project documentation for Bird's Eye here, including a tutorial on how you can use it and what else you can do with it. I've only scratched the surface. It's a very interesting and useful Python debugger that uh, if you're interested in doing some more complicated Python programming, it's good to know how to use Bird's Eye. Okay, now in the next couple of lectures, I'd like to show you how to do simple MicroPython programming tasks with the BBC Microbit and the Raspberry Pi Picker.